Hi everybody, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. Welcome, welcome. It is time for another Make It Monday. Today is Monday, May 13th, and I am really excited. Um, it's going to be kind of a slightly different class tonight, and I'll explain why. But I'm very excited to share with you a new suite from the brand new annual catalog. And I will tell you that when I first looked at this, I'm like, I don't know, do I really like that paper or not? Couldn't quite decide and decided to go for it because I did find, hi Kay, thanks for joining in. Um, I did like the cards that they had in the catalog. That's really what sold me on this paper initially, actually this whole suite of products. And so that's what I'm gonna share with you tonight. Um, and like I said, it's a little bit different, but I think it'll also give you, when I explain why I did it that way, maybe give you another opportunity to learn how to be creative as well. So, um, I am going to jump in on this, but first want to just check in how your week, your weekend's been. Hope everybody that celebrated Mother's Day had a nice day. Um, here we had a really great afternoon. It was actually, I think, 88 degrees is what it got to here. So that was extremely warm for us, um, especially for this time of year. But then um, a cool front, they called it a cold front, a cool front moved through. I didn't really notice a drastic difference in temperature. I mean, it did cool down, but what it did was bring in a lot of smoke from some Canadian fires. And so that triggered some air alerts for us here. Hi, Anna, thanks for joining in. Um, figured it triggered in a few air alerts for not going outside and um, created kind of a haze in our area. And then um, you could definitely smell the fire in the smoke. So the, the beauty of that for those of us not experiencing those fires is that the sunsets are very beautiful. Um, the other thing that John and I did on, I think it was Friday night, I'm pretty sure it was Friday night, we had the opportunity, as did many people, to see Northern Lights. And even though I've lived in Minnesota most of my life, that's one of those things that I haven't seen yet. So we headed up maybe 30 minutes away from our house. We left at 11 o'clock at night and um, went out to look for Northern Lights and it was kind of disappointing at first because all we could see were the, the white streaks in the sky, but not a whole lot happening. You could kind of see it dancing. So we knew that we were in the right space, but we just weren't seeing all that beautiful color. And as soon as we took our phones out and started looking through our phones, the color appeared. So I have officially gotten to see Northern Lights, but I still want to be able to see them with full color and that whole the whole natural thing. Uh, mostly just to say, hey, I've done it, because why not? So anyhow, that was um, kind of kind of my day, and I or my week, I guess. And I like I said, I just hope everybody had a great time. I'm going to go ahead and flip you over, so I will change. Oh, good. I thought I disconnected us. <laughs> oh, I didn't, though. So sorry about that. Um, I had to do some technology stuff at work today, too, to get an orientation program to work. And I tell you, it didn't go quite, it didn't go bad. It went kind of better almost than what I was expecting, but kind of done dealing with these computer things. All right. So um, the suite of products that I'm going to share with you is this wild wildly flowering sweet collection and it's on pages 40 and 41 in the annual catalog and the suite includes this stamp set which is a total of eight stamps um, this time unlike some of our other stamps it's all in a cursive font so it's very pretty sending happy thoughts you've been on my mind and thank you and then it's just got these simple little flowers and a little design piece. Um, I have actually in my cards tonight used every stamp in here but this one and I probably could have used that one. Yeah, maybe not. I didn't use that stamp. Everything else has been used in this set. And then it comes with these fabulous dies and I almost thought about just getting these dies when I was still wavering a little bit on the paper um, because I love how you can get all these shapes and frames and stuff. Um, but well worth it. These are really cool. I have actually used every die on our cards tonight. And then it also comes with this fabulous 3D embossing folders. If you've been watching me for any length of time, you know I like my embossing folders. 
Um, this one, I, I don't really know what kind of pattern to call it or anything. Um, the folder itself is called Dashing Designs, and it looks like this. Um, hopefully you can see that. I don't know, I'll see if I can get my light to go on it a little bit better. So you can kind of see that texture in it. And this is another one that would look good, I think, on either side that you used it on. I don't know that there's really a right and a wrong. Um, it's just opposite. What's debossed in here is going to be embossed on the other side. So it's going to stand out here and be sunk in on that side. So another fabulous 3D embossing folder. I love them, love them, love them. And then they come with these really cool... Um, they're called just adhesive back textured dots, but they've got, I don't know, just a little bit of texture. They're kind of brass, kind of not, kind of just a color. I don't know, maybe if I shine my light, you can see. Well, you can see my light. But anyway, trust me, there's texture on those. Really cool. So needless to say, I got the whole suite, as you can now tell, and I just really like it. I struggled with this paper. Do I like it? Do I not? This um, in color, the wild wheat has never been one of my favorite in colors, so I tend to shy away from it. And I don't know how much of it I'll use. Fortunately, excuse me, as I reach across here, I need to plug my iPad in so that I'm sure I'm getting everything on video. Anyway, um, I actually like the floral pattern enough that I think I'm going to use it as long as I accent it with the other colors in there, but maybe it'll force me to use that too. So before I start showing you the cards, which I'm showing these four cards tonight, I did not wrap a gift box. Let me share with you the paper. And the paper is called wildly flowering just like the suite of products and so this is that wild wheat and when you flip it over it's got moody mauve and this one is this is kind of the texture that's on the brat or the adhesive back dots it sort of is just burlappy maybe and then we've got this very pretty paper very simple misty moonlight with some white early espresso and crumb cake with just a hint of that wild wheat. And then here we've got kind of a crumb cakey tone. I really like these colors. Oh, this looks like it could be wallpaper in a house back when wallpaper was fashionable. Not really sure. I think this goes the direction it goes, but I think it kind of can be a little twisty turny on you too if you want it to be. And it's got a similar pattern to that Moody Moth, just in Misty Moonlight. Great background paper. And then we've got this pretty Moody Moth um, paper with these little floral sprigs on it. It's just very dainty. And then this is a bigger one with um, the Wild Wheat. And I think if you have a circle punch or die, you'd be able to punch out some of these circles probably and have just that flower as a focal point. And then here's just a bigger Moody Mauve with kind of the larger florals. And it's interesting, Moody Mauve, white and early espresso. I don't know that I would have thought of putting these two colors together, but they really do look nice, especially with the cardstock. And then here again is kind of this pattern, but just on the Moody Mauve background. The colors that go with this include I had all my cardstock here. Of course, the wild wheat. Um, it includes mossy meadow. Moody mauve. Um, I want to make sure I'm saying the right colors. Misty moonlight. Early espresso. And crumb cake. And honestly, I haven't used... I used to use crumb cake all the time. And it's been a while... And I initially planned to use it tonight, but I ended up going with early espresso. And um, it just, for me, looked better with the cardstock that I, or the designer paper. Totally up to you. I am going to make it a goal to start using that crumb cake because I really do like that color. 
But let's just jump in and I'm going to go ahead and show you the first two cards that I've already made. Um, I will tell you there's two reasons that I went I went with this. I was short on time. I did um, come down last night to my craft area to really try to put something together and um, I had just a little bit of time that I could do that and honestly do you ever have times where your creativity just isn't present? That was for me last night and then um, I do work full time and so today I did not get out of my job as quickly as I expected to get home and have time to do some stuff and so I went with what was in the catalog partially because I needed some inspiration and I just needed to try something because my own creativity juices simply were not flowing. And so I went with that and then because I was pushing time, it also made it very easy for me to put some cards together. So there are some beautiful designs in the catalog, absolutely stunning cards that are out there. So if you get stuck, don't be afraid to go to the catalog. So this is my take on this card. And then I'm also going to show you my take on this card. Um, I did not have the um, ribbon or twine that they use. It's actually, it looks like kind of a, a thicker, heavier twine. I did have some left over from a previous catalog, and this was just way too big. Way too big. So I said, nope, I can't do that. So I just got my basic twine out and used that instead. Um so that's this card, and it just used one of the dies that I trimmed and cut off to create that background. It's just designer series paper. So that was pretty easy, and I used my blends for coloring the flowers to add a little pop of color. Pretty simple. This card is very, very easy. It uses um, your basic mossy metal for a card base, and then this um, next layer is measuring two and a half by four and a quarter inches and it's just basic white cardstock and I followed the catalog pretty much exactly except maybe placement um, to to add these layers of stamps. This is Misty Moonlight with basic white or the white embossing powder and it includes some of those um, adhesive backs. It was actually a very quick easy card to use. I did use on here the Wild Wheat Ink Mossy Meadow and Mist Misty Moonlight um, so it creates a very simple card um, that was pretty easy to put together. So the next card that I want to share with you is this card. Now, this is pretty fussy, and I normally don't add all of this stuff to my cards, but since I needed some help tonight and I'm pushing myself just a little bit, I am going to show you how to make this one and go for it. I may not always like making cards like this, but I know people like to receive them. So I've got a piece of five and a half by eight and a half early espresso card cardstock. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my adhesive and um, I'm not decorating the inside of any of these cards. Cause you know, time. Come on adhesive, there we go. So I'm just going to start by putting my inside piece looking at opposite corners to make sure they're even. And if these two are even, then these two should be even. And then I've taken a piece. I did change this up a little bit. Um, they had this designer paper covering the whole card and I didn't like it. And I really like this one better. This is where I thought I might bring in come tr the crumb cake. I even tried it with the new basic beige that's out and I didn't like it. Um, I also like to have a border, it's just me, around my designer paper. And so instead of going edge to edge, I just cut my designer paper to the usual four by five and a quarter and it will be centered on my card. So when you're making these cards, if you're trying to kind of recreate what's in the catalog, they don't have to be exact. This one I did do pretty much exact. Um, this one, my supplies, I didn't have everything, so I made it a little different with that twine. This one, I'm changing up the colors. And that's how it's going to become kind of my card, but I'm using the same layout. So I've got that piece layered on here, and then I did some die cutting. So I used 
you should have seen me trying to keep straight all the different dies I was using. Huh. I used this large die, which gave me this piece. So that's this one. And it, it does a double stitching on the border. Hopefully, if I hold it up close, you can see that. So that's pretty cool. And then when I brought it over to my table to work on, I promptly recycled it with the scraps of paper. So I dig through my trash to find it. Oh, well. And then I took this die. And with that, you actually get two pieces. So you get the scalloped edged piece. And um, let me hold it up against here. And it's got these nice little accent cuts in the scallops. So that's kind of cool. But then it also cuts out this lovely diamond sort of shape that you can use on another card. So we're going to see that piece when I make the last card. And that gives me um, that particular piece. I also cut another one of these out of basic or the early espresso. And I just painted it, I brushed it with my blending brushes a little bit with the craft white ink. Um, I don't know if I'm super crazy about it, but I'm leaving it. Again, I'm trying to kind of mimic what's in there. And then I stamp my sentiment in sending happy thoughts and I just cut those at angles. And then I've got another strip of the mossy, or excuse me, the moody mauve paper that is gonna be used as a background behind that. And then I have three of these flowers that I stamped in Misty Moonlight and three of these flowers that I used Mossy Meadow and Moody Mauve to color. And I wanna show you how I colored these because um, I do like to show little tips like that as well. So I'm grabbing my little scrap calendar and this is something I haven't done in quite a while. This is just stamped with Misty Moonlight, so it is a water-based paint. And then I've got one of our water painters, so it's just got water in it. Um, I never recommend holding this over your work when you're squeezing the water down to make sure you've got a wet tip because it will drop water out. Um, so I always try to do it in my hand or off to the side. And all I did, I wanted to add just a little pop of color, but not as dark as my blends or markers would make it. And because this is a water-based ink, I can come through with a water painter and I can start to color with water. I'm not even paying a whole lot of attention to staying exactly in the lines, but I have just enough water on my brush and I'm actually going to add even a little bit more that I can paint these flowers and move some of that ink around which just gives the appearance of a little bit of shading of ink so it's kind of a quick way to add a very light amount of ink and I don't necessarily feel this has to be perfect in the lines and the reason for that is it does give more of a watercolor look and that isn't always going to be a perfect Thing and I'm trying to create just a little bit of that blue tone. So for me, I don't think it has to be in the lines. You can do whatever you want. If that's not your style, that's okay. Sometimes I like living outside of the box. And I'm even going to go down the stem a little bit just to get the water moving. I'm not using a lot of water, so this is not on watercolor paper or anything. It's just our regular cardstock. So you do want to make sure that you're not oversaturating it with water. And I can just set that off to dry. Now to color these, I'm doing the old squeeze your ink pad and add a drop of water into the lid with your painter. And then you can pull color out. The further you pull it from that color, the more pastel, lighter color it'll be. I always like to do it a little bit on my paper so I see kind of what I'm working with. And again, I am just covering the ink. Um, I did use Memento ink, and it will smear if you get it too super heavy. 
Um, again, it kind of gives it the watercolor look, but I try not to use a lot of water. Um, but I'm also not concerned about staying exactly on the lines. I want to have that pop of color to show. And then I am going to use Moody Mauve, so I do need to make sure that I don't have any of my mossy meadow on here. And again, to get that color, you just squeeze your lid. I don't know if I've opened this one enough that that trick is going to work. And again, I'm just going to add that water, and I can pull my color out test it and then I'm just filling in that flower. I think this technique over markers, colored pencils, or the blends is going to give you the palest of the color options when you're doing this. And for this particular card, that's all I'm looking for. I want just a pop of color, but not a lot. So that's a coloring technique with the water um, pens. Is doing that. I used to do a lot more of it and it's been a while so I was kind of happy to say hey that's what I want to do. All right so let's come back here now and we will assemble all of our pieces. There is a lot that I had to cut but it wasn't too bad. I'm going to start by using the this largest frame that I created and I'm going to take mini glue dots because I do want this popped up. And so I'm just going to put them, I'm hoping that this is going to work. If this doesn't, I'm going to move to plan B because I don't want them showing. All right, I think it's going to show. So I'm going to move to plan B and grab some strips if I can easily find them. which it's that easy part that might not come so easily here for me. I have a giant bin that I keep all of my adhesives in and I can tell what I've used or not used recently by what's on the bottom of my bin. So I'm not seeing anything in there. Now I'm going to move to plan C it's always good to have options and I'm going to grab my not so favorite scissors and just start cutting some of these dimensionals in half. Now this is the hard way to cut them. I'm going to show you a trick to give you the easy way to cut them because you know it can get tricky dealing with them. Just take your scissors and before you remove them from here you can just cut up while they're still adhered and start cutting some in half and then then you don't have to worry about cutting those little things while you're holding it and we're just going to put one here one oh that one's going to show twist it all right It's such a narrow band and I can't see around my fingers. And I think I'm going to cut one more. And there we go. And now, of course, I'll have the fun of peeling all these little backs off without removing, hopefully, the foam from my, or the dimensional, rather, from my frame. That might be easier said than done, too. Come on. Oh, that piece doesn't want to come off. That piece just doesn't want to stick. I'm having problems with this tonight, aren't I? Oh, there. Fortunately, I still have one half left that I can put here. Um, with this particular die, I did have to run it through a couple times to get it cut all the way through. 
I didn't put a shim in. I suspect if I had taken time to run over and get a scrap piece of paper to put as a shim, it would have gone through the first time. But just for me on my particular machine, it did require me to add just a little more thickness or run it through once or twice. And this is just going to get centered on the card. And we'll stick it down. Um, I'm just having it popped up now. Huh, you know what? I had two of those. No, I don't. <laughs> I just have one. So I now have an extra one. That's funny. I didn't even know I had two pieces of paper. Um, now I just have an extra one for another project. How lucky is that? Okay, and then we are going to put just with regular adhesive. You can see I tried a couple times on that brushing to get it to look right. Now I'm just going to center this right into that opening, like so. And I'm going to put my scalloped edges on. This one will allow <clears throat> for mini dimensionals in the scallops. without being seen, so that's kind of nice. So we're just going to do that, and I'll come back through, and hopefully these will peel off a little better because they're full-sized. Looks like I have a little glue dot on my finger too. Hmm. That might have been why I was having issues before. As I actually had a glue dot on my finger that was picking up my paper. Don't know where that came from. All right. So now I've got all my dimensionals uncovered on here. And so I am just going to lay that down over that triangle or the that diamond piece just to frame that. So, so far we're doing so good. And then I've got my flowers here and I always like to just kind of lay out how my flowers are gonna go on. It's not so hard on this one cause I am copying a design. Um, if I have one that didn't cut quite as well as the other, I'm probably gonna place it in a way that some of the cutting might not show up quite as much. And this one we're gonna put kind of down here and then we've got this, this one in about that space. We've got one that comes out upside down from here. And last but not least, we've got another one that's up here somewhere. And then these pieces will get it here down. So I just like to do a quick layout so that as I start to tape these things, I know where stuff needs to go. I am going to kind of put this on to that Moody Mauve piece a little... crooked so if that bothers you sorry but I'm gonna do it anyhow and then we're just gonna start taping these pieces down I'm not putting dimensionals behind these um, because there's already enough popping up that has occurred so in case you're wondering about that. And then we'll drop that one down here. And then we're going to put this one. Double check. So it's in front of that. And we're going to have this one go kind of right here. And then last but not least... We'll just put that one here. So there's just a little bit of it popping out. This piece I am gonna put on dimensionals in part because 
I've already got um, a lot of stuff going on in that center. So we're just going to pop on a couple dimensionals. If you're wondering why my dimensional pack is a little funny, it's left over from a paper pumpkin. I don't like to waste any part of my supplies, so I'm just using it up this way. And I do want my sentiment to be straight, which is a little hard to tell with that crooked background, but there you go. So there's that third card. So right now I've recreated these three cards. Um, this one was putsy in terms of having to cut out all of those diamonds and then cut them down to fit. Um, I actually laid them all out on, on a layer of cardstock and then trimmed them with my trimmer, but it's just a little bit putsy from that perspective. This one had the most die cutting and probably the most coloring on it. But even though I said I'm not a big fan of super fussy cards with a lot of stuff on them, I like this with the colors that I've chosen. I don't know that I'd like it as well with the crumb cake. So sometimes by just switching up the color, I'm actually surprised, to be honest with you, um, that I do like that. So sometimes try something that's a little bit different. You might surprise yourself, actually, with what you end up with. This last card is definitely going to be the easiest card. And one of the reasons I saved this for last is I knew this was going to be a little more challenging to put together. Um, what I liked about this card is it showed me a different way to use both my designer paper and my die cuts. Because honestly, when I have die cuts, I think I um, can use them for layering, like we just did on that last card. But I don't think of doing designer series paper particularly. And tonight I've done that with two cards. But this card in particular, I think it really stood out. So I ran a layer of um, cardstock through the embossing folder. And this piece actually is four and an eighth by five and um, three eighths. So it's just an eighth of an inch smaller than the um, card base. And I did that on purpose because um, I really didn't want too much of that card base showing through. And I just want to make sure, all right, we are going to just adhere this over so that it's covering most of the front of my card. And I did use more adhesive on here than I normally would simply because it is a um, part of the, the 3D embossing folder and sometimes they tend to um, stick a bit more. All right, so with this card, again, I've got that diamond. This came out of the inside of my white scalloped card here. And it fits perfectly, obviously, inside here because that's where it came from. And then I used the smaller die cut, which is this piece right here, to create this piece, which was taken right from the designer series paper. And it will fit in there and give me a real nice border on that basic white. And then somewhere, and of course I can't find it right now, so I'm going to keep working and hope that miraculously this other piece will pop up because it's my sentiment piece. And if it doesn't, we may just have to imagine stuff. I'll double check the floor, but I don't see it down here. So it'll show up. It's somewhere on my desk. I did have everything all together. Maybe it's on the inside. No. Nope simply because I changed up coloring just a little bit. And then let's grab our mini glue dots again, or our mini um, dimensionals, because I think I do want this frame to be standing up just a little, standing out just a little bit from the rest of the card. So one of the things is I'm trying to put the flat edge of the dimensional so that it's parallel to the inside of the frame. I think that may help a little bit with not having anything showing through. That's my hope. Okay. 
Something tells me I'm going to find these little dimensionals all over my house tonight. It seems like no matter how hard you try to keep them contained, they still spread. All right, so on this card, we're just going to center this frame. Like that. And then I'm going to keep this piece inside there, but not raised up. So I'm going to put a little adhesive. I really need to clean the edges of my dispenser here. They're kind of goopy, which I think is making my tape stick a little more to itself. And so I'm just going to lay this down on the inside of my card. I do want my frame to be on top of it. So in hindsight, I probably should have put that interior piece down first, just if you decide to make this card. And then I have this wonderful thank you sentiment that I had already stamped and embossed. And I was going to show you another trick with it. So let me do a quick, another quick look on my desk. Um, because one of the things I did is I used the white embossing powder. And I don't know if when you guys do that, you ever... I find it sometimes hard to get rid of all the powder for some reason with the white and it tends to just show up more. And so there it is. It just fell out. Yay. I want to show you a little trick that can work with that. So if you have, and I would recommend the markers over a blend pen, um, just because it gets you a little more control and it isn't going to, um, spread quite as much but I've just got my early espresso marker and you can see I've got little white dots just below oh, hopefully my camera will focus in on it yep there there's just little specks so I'm just going to take the fine tipped end of my marker and I'm going to color over them yeah it sort of leaves a mark but it helps to cover them up too um, so just a, a quick tip on doing that. Um, worst case scenario, which I think I'm going to do because honestly, I don't like how that looks when I covered it up just now with that particular color. It may work better with other colors. So it's not necessarily a bad tip. It just didn't work for this color. How's that? Ah, it's live. So then I'm just going to put this thank you on here. And then I am going to use some of those beautiful self-adhesive um, brads that we have. So I'm going to grab one of these small ones and I'm going to plop it right where I tried to fix the white spot. That's also a great tip for covering up little things like that. <laughs> so, and we're just going to add one more of these. Maybe I'll put another little one on over here even. And there you go. You've got your card done now. So again, I was lacking both time and inspiration. My creative juices just weren't quite flowing. So I looked back on what excited me about the suite, what really caught my eyes the first time I did this. And for me, it was the cards more so I liked I thought I liked the paper but I wasn't sure but then when I saw what the cards looked like that's what I used for my inspiration so don't be afraid to do that and now we've ended up with four very beautiful cards each in a different color family um, with this array of four cards here I've actually used like I mentioned every product in this suite. I used all but one stamp. I've used every single die. I've used every single sentiment. Um, and none of these cards were hard to make. Would I want to mass produce some of them? Probably not. These two I would question mass producing just because they took a little more work. These two were very simple to create. And um, I think 
they're all very beautiful cards. So I hope this gives you some inspiration, some thoughts on what you can do when you're struggling coming up with your design. Don't be afraid to create from what's in the catalog. Use that for your inspiration. Um, change it up a little bit like I did with colors if you're not super crazy about some of the colors or even some of the paper. I could have made these cards with a whole different set of paper. Um, but it was where my inspiration was coming from tonight. So take care, everybody. Um, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of some of the paper we're going to be using for my project next week, which is yet to be designed, but will be. I'm just going to tease you with this. That's all I'm going to do. Isn't that paper gorgeous? Stay tuned for next week. Take care, everybody. Have a great night, and we will see you.